Um, my name is Jordan. Uh, I'm Craig. And this is our project that we've worked on for the past three weeks, the lightning detector. Okay. Um, so some background information. Um, this is all within the Terra project, or the Telescope Array Radar project. Um, and basically the Basically, the goal of that project is to detect and analyze cosmic rays, um, which are high-energy particles of kind of uncertain origin. Um, so researchers are trying to find out a little bit more about them. Um, and a researcher named Gurevic um, postulated that cosmic ray showers could be a cause of lightning, because we don't actually really know why lightning happens, because the difference um, between the voltages between the clouds and the ground or from cloud to cloud isn't actually great enough to cause lightning. So we know that there's another reason behind lightning and um, the idea is that cosmic ray showers might be the source of that. Um, so as cosmic rays descend to the earth, um, they cause ionization and that ionization is possibly what causes lightning to strike. Um, so the idea behind having a lightning detector, what we've worked on all summer, is that um, it would be serve as a trigger for antennae that, w that detect radio waves. So cosmic ray showers and lightning strikes give off radio waves, and if we know exactly when lightning strikes, then we can trigger the antenna to start recording data and analyze what exact type of radio wave we're receiving to determine whether it's cosmic rays or lightning or a mixture of the two. Um, so we're trying to determine the time, distance, and exact direction of the lightning, as exact as possible. Um, so this is kind of a basic structure of our lightning detector. This is the main part right here that houses six photoresistors, um, and then it's hooked up all to an Arduino, and that spits out um, data to our computer, and it'll eventually write to an SD card. Um, but the photoresistors are kind of aligned like this. There are three that face outward, um, reading about 120 degrees all around, and then there are three more stacked on top, kind of the reverse of that. So, kind of looks like this from the top. Um, and then the image that you see to the right is kind of our early prototype of a thunder detector, which would further verify the data that we get from the lightning detector. So, it uses four microphones, <coughs> and eventually they'll kind of be paneled. Um, in four different directions to determine the approximate direction of thunder, just to kind of further verify that flashes of light are indeed lightning. Um, so what we've been working on specifically to accomplish these goals this summer has, has included debug debugging the code. We've received a few different versions of the code. Um, general device troubleshooting. For a while, we actually weren't powering part of our device, um, so that was Definitely an issue when we're trying to gather data. Um, testing the photoresistors to make sure that they're all working properly and one of them isn't um, receiving less light than the others. Ordering and testing the microphone sensors for the thunder detector. Writing the code and testing the device overall and receiving the data and analyzing it. Okay, so code problems. So as she briefly mentioned, uh, we received a version of the code from one of the students that worked on it in past years which was probably something they had about halfway through the summer. So it was very unpolished, and we were trying to work with that and refine it, and that went very badly, and then we got a slightly better version, and that one was still old, and then we received a nearly up-to-date version, uh, which we were hoping would pretty much run as intended, because last summer they had it working to within seven degrees, but it also failed, so I tried to play around with that, and eventually, decided that it was very difficult to work with, so then I just went ahead and wound up making my um, own calculation. So I'm going to go on to the next slide. Um, so the calculation that I did, basically the idea of it is, and I'll walk over here so I can use the board. Um, the idea is, so you have these three resistors kind of like she talked about. So what it does, and uh, just so you're familiar with the notation, I'm using X, Y, Z, A is a variable that I use that tells me which panel is the most lit up. So here it's saying if the zeroth panel is the most lit up. Um, and then A, B, and C are 0, 2, 4, E is 1, and then 3 and 5 is E and F. So basically what it's doing is it's saying if this panel is the most lit up, it looks and sees how different these two panels are from each other because they segment the zeroth panel in half basically. 
Um, so if these two panels are very close to the same value, that means that the light is like really within this region by like a pretty close amount with uh, 0.4, and that can be adjusted quite a bit. And then, so then after that, assuming that they're not really close values, so it's shaded more so to one side or the other, then so if E is greater than F, so if this one is greater than this, basically, you know that it's in this 60 degree region. So then once you know that, you can take the total light between these two panels, take what percentage of the light is on the zeroth panel, with the resistors in the middle of all of these, by the way. So then the higher value of light on here means it's closer to the center of here. So you can kind of use that to drag it, drag the lights or the degree measure to the center. And it's the same principle on this side. And you do that for all of them. So there's a if structure that basically looks like this for all of the panels. And then that's how we've been using it to determine. So, so or you go take this one. All right. Um, so for testing of our lightning detector, that basically involved getting pretty precise angle measurements um, for where we position the light. And then um, this, is, this is actually a strobe light. That's what we use to simulate lightning to the best of our ability at this point. Um, and it would flash a light pretty, I, I don't know the exact frequency, but pretty it's, frequently. It's about like, duh, 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 yeah, duh, 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 It's kind of noisy, kind of ingrained in our memories now, but um, we used that and then we would rotate this lightning detector by 15 degrees and then record what the actual angle measurement it was at was versus what the lightning detector was saying the degree measure was for the light. And then um, also on this setup, because we did two trial runs, which we'll get to in a second. For this one, I have it elevated on a used pizza box and also a book that I found lying around. Because what I was trying to do is, um, I was trying to get the light to where the strobe light would be roughly in the middle of it to try to test how good these lights were at dividing it up and funneling it into the correct panel. And that we did one test with that, which performed a bit worse than when I get to pick the height of the light and kind of decide which panel it's going to be funneled into more, which we'll see in just a second. So the results of this testing is under the best conditions, so that's when I'm getting to pick the height of the strobe light, it performed very, very well. Our average error was only 2.2 degrees, two degrees basically. We consistently hit the angle almost exactly, especially on the cases where it's shining right here, so it equals out to here, and it's shined on that. So that one was almost, I think, every interval of that, we got it exactly. And then the other ones also performed very well. Now under the unfavorable conditions where I'm shining on the middle height, uh, it goes up quite a bit. And I have a couple of ideas of how this might be remedied in the future, but we're out of time in the summer. But so that was still a fairly acceptable number at 10.3 degrees, although we would like to get that lower. Um, yeah, so some of them, like there was one case, I think it was on one of the things, it was like within the two degrees with similar readings to where we're sawing on the other one. But then on another panel, it might be off by 15 when it's in a similar structure. Um, part of the issue with this, by the way, which comes with testing the photoresistors, is all of these things are basically constantly taking the light value that they're receiving around them. And if, with how the calculation is based, it's kind of leveraging those values against each other. And if one of them is reading worse than the other, so like two of our panels were roughly always 0.4 behind the others, even if they were in a very similar lighting environment, which can throw it off quite a bit. So I went in and artificially always bumped those up by 0.4 because from the experiments we did, we're pretty sure it's just like a linear progression. So if you bump it up 0.4 at the start, it'll keep that. But some of the error rate that we see might be because the photoresistors aren't exactly balanced with each other at this starting point, which is another thing that could use some further refinement. And of course, human error is going to play a role in some of that too, like getting the exact angle measurements. So here's us with our ideal conditions. You can see the red lines, the actual angle, and then the blue is what we got. You see there's, I guess, a bad reading there and a bad reading there, but pretty much throughout it's near identical. So that was very solid for us. And then for the unfavorable condition, you can see it's uh, quite a bit more sporadic, almost always missing on the low side. Um, 
which I think could be an area of further investigation. And the drop off at the end is just because it goes up to 360 and ours bumps it down to zero and the line doesn't. So that's not really a concern. But yeah, you can see it's when you don't get to pick the height, it has quite a bit of trouble filtering out exactly getting that to the correct panel and getting a significant reading on the one to draw the light back in. Um, all right, so we definitely had our share of obstacles as we worked on this project. Um, some of the more pressing matters were having various versions of code and not actually starting with the most up-to-date version of the code um, and making some progress on the version we had and then getting a more updated version that would kind of go back to square one and then try to make progress on that. Um, some of the code we got wasn't common super well and we didn't have a lot of time with um, some of the people who worked on the project originally, so it was kind of hard to make that transition there. Um, we didn't really have that much Arduino experience between the two of us. I know Craig worked, had some experience with Arduino, but kind of jumping right into that, we had to really hit the ground running. Um, and then difficulty simulating lightning, that's still an issue for us and something that um, myself and other people working on this project in the future are going to have to deal with, um, making sure that the simulations for lightning that we use to determine the angles and everything are as accurate as possible to actual lightning. So we know that it'll actually work when we deploy it in the field. Um, and then another issue we had was having one lightning detection device. So it's kind of difficult to share it between the two of us sometimes. And then another thing with only having the one lightning detection device, you notice like we kind of want to be able to know like where the lightning struck rather than just like in what field. And once you get two of the two of the lightning detectors, then we'd be able to triangulate between them. But with just the one, we're not really able to test the capability and communication between them on that front. So that was another issue. Okay. Um, so there are definitely some future steps to be taken on this project. Um, we do have a functioning lightning detection prototype um, at the end of our work here. Um, but we are considering rebuilding the device with a Raspberry Pi because the Raspberry Pi would have a greater clock speed, which is significant when dealing with something as quick as lightning, but also because it can run more than one process. So it has some more flexibility with the programming behind it. Um, again, kind of like Craig mentioned, we'd probably build a second device to, have, to be able to tri triangulate the distance and angle for where the lightning is actually striking. Um, and to, to kind of add some more accuracy in there. Um, we work on collecting preliminary data and doing a lot more testing, especially with different types of simulated lightning to make sure that we're not just using the strobe light the whole time and then deploying it and not being able to gather the data we need. Um, and then eventually deploying the device out in the field. So are there any questions? Sorry, I, I, I didn't get what what was meant by favorable versus unfavorable. Okay, so basically with what that is, is on when I was going through and doing the favorable testing, I would pick like, so uh, imagine this is like a phone with like the camera down here. If the third panel was like right there and like facing outwards rather than like shining like here, or for, I'll use this, it's like zero. If I shine the light here on zero, it's gonna do a very good reading of getting it right here. But if it's down here, it's getting split up a lot more along here. And it, the function I had should catch that, but like say it was like here. Okay, so, so this is, um, so, so your resolution degrades as you go off axis. Uh, yeah, I think, I'm pretty sure, yes. Okay. Yeah, so I mean, that's, that's kind of part of um, using different simulations for lightning. We definitely want to do some testing um, where the light source is a lot farther away because I mean actual lightning is going to be really far away um, and that the, the diffusion of that light might actually make it a little bit easier to read the angle yeah um, since it'll be farther away yeah. on that front with how I believe it should work with so you have like the lightning strike and then the lights like traveling outwards towards our detector and I guess all the other directions too and there should be like in the middle of that strike like a much more charged part of it that's like much brighter and I'm fairly sure with how that works at a longer distance, it should actually favor our panel design and the code design to where it will funnel it into the correct, correct panel and like do that better than if I'm just doing it with a strobe light. Like, 
kind of far away and it's like illuminating everything like pretty powerfully. I, I think it should be a bit better with the lightning, but we'll have to wait until we can get it out in the field to see the results of that. And, and then also I had, I had a comment, I guess this is mostly for Jordan, but in terms of the um, Raspberry Pi versus the Arduino, if we want stereoscopic reconstruction, then the um, the time resolution, maybe maybe you know this even or Sasha, the time resolution on the Arduino uh, is going to dictate how far away the two um, um, eyes, if you like, uh, have to be. Um, so if that if the time resolution on the Arduino seeing a signal is very, very poor, then the two stations have to be very, very far apart, maybe ridiculously far apart. Now, I don't know how much real estate we have out there or if it's going to be deployed. Um, and I, I don't know what the timing resolution, the intrinsic timing resolution is. They'd have, it's, so the Arduino clock is 16 megahertz, so I guess they'd have to be, yeah, they'd have to be pretty far away. It's really yeah. like a thousand feet apart. How many, how, how far? A thousand feet. Right. Yeah. A microsecond. So this is, so, and we didn't think about this before, but I, this is another, I think, strong argument for, um, for going to Raspberry Pi, even though, you know, the CPU is overkill. But just from the standpoint of being able to do stereo reconstruction, I think, uh, I, I don't know how else we're going to get around that. Yeah, I don't think it's overkill, really. I mean, plus the, the programming is pretty nice. I mean, yeah. It's just a Linux machine. Anything else? Okay. Thank you, Jordan. Great.